Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. And today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. I was very excited when he decided to come on the show. His name is Elias Marty. He is a podcaster, and he specializes in talking about spirituality. He's very into politics and about improving our nation and what you know he feels in his own opinion, some of the good things and some of the bad things, and what really needs to be done in order for our country to be well united and to be strong and to be to get rid of that hate and to really learn how to bring peace and love and harmony back into our country where we all could work together as one and he's here today to share some of his own personal views and to talk about things that have really strong meaning to not just him but to a lot of people in this nation so i'm very honored elias to have you on the show I really love your podcast. I'm so excited that you're here. Tell everybody a little about yourself and who you are and what you do. Uh, first of all, let me just say that I'm very thankful. I am just super thankful to be here, really. I mean, I would never thought this would happen this quickly. I mean, I thank you again for inviting me, giving me this opportunity, even though Initially, I'm calling myself out. I was a bit timid. I was afraid, like, oh, what's this big podcast we're doing? Me, <laughs> a little old humble podcast. But, oh, seriously, I'm thank I'm thankful just to be here, and I'm just a podcaster who just wants to talk about. Which I love how she puts it in order better than I do. I always put politics first, but I think spirituality should be numero uno. It should be number one because without being spiritually connected. We all just crazy, wacky meat suits, just walking around, dealing with life and creating solutions and problems and anything in between, really. Right. So that's what I like to do. And I mostly just focus on politics, like I said, technology, primarily AI, what's the good, the bad, and how you should deal with using AI. And AI can be good for non-technical users. Just one thing I'm going to say, you don't need to code. Just type a prompt. If you could communicate well with your typing skills or verbalize it well, AI will listen. Just make sure it's specific, detailed, and concise. Just like you talk to a person who doesn't have time because a person who doesn't have, have time is not very receptive. I was like, oh, okay, 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 get to the point. <laughs> AI is kind of like that. All right. I'm sure when AI things would get exponentially better. That's what I'm going to say. I could get much deeper into that. That's the technology bucket. And then the third bucket, which spirituality is a part of, is where I talk or share a guest who has a great way to improve humanity. And so far, I'm proud to say that I have someone who can help you legally, how to address your complaint effectively in court. And of course, legally, nonviolent in a very civil way, and actually get some results. Shout out to Kurt Becker. Okay, that I gotta give shout out to him. That was very, very informative. I've learned a lot from that. And I thought I knew my first amendment. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, he says, he said my he he exposed my blind spot in a good way. Because if I came by my ego, I would have been upset. I would have threw him out. You know, mm -hmm. but it was a good thing because I said, oh. I got the four parts of it right, but you know this one I will forget. He said petition. Yep, I always forget petition. You know, you know, assembly, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, congregate, congregate, all all that good stuff, right? But petition is where you address the court. So that's one good example of it. And spirituality. And I have, I'm happy to say, I finally got a Muslim guest. Mm -hmm. It was difficult, but it was worth it because I said, no, this podcast is not too promote one side over the other i don't want to favor too much the right the left the muslim the jew the christian even though i do come from a christian background i think all of them you know all of them just put it nicely it's a starting point until we reach one true higher power all of them start by buddhism hinduism okay so that's all i'm going to say in a nutshell my podcast is just called politically high tech you could check. You could check that out. It's an Apple podcast primarily because that's the, I think, the only good podcast um, system, in my opinion. And I'm sure they're in, in other distributions as well. But enough shameless plug in. <laughs> I'm ready. What questions you got for me, Stacey? 
So I'd like to know when it comes to spirituality, you know, we, how does spirituality come into your life and how has it made such a huge impact in making you the person you are today and looking at life the way you do? Well, to put it very, very simple, it definitely reshaped how I look at life. Because I could just tell you my life without spirituality, my life with spirituality. Well, like a before and after. Before it, I was depressed. I saw things const with a negative lens. Even when something positive happens, I somehow magic turn turning negative. Oh, that person's giving me money because that person wants something in return. Right. Even if that's true, with spiritual means, just saying, well, I just owe the person back. Negative means like, oh, I don't want to owe that person. You shouldn't give me money in the first place. Eh, take your money. Leave me alone. It's how you handle situations. Because problems are always going to happen. Chaos is going to happen. Okay, there's nothing we can do about it. But it's how we choose to react and how we deal with them is the big difference, right? And this is cheesy. I'm sure I'm not the first. This is not unique, what I'm saying here. But I just think it needs to be emphasized. All right, so, and I already have said the story before, but I will say it, I will just say it again for your audience. I used to be very depressed. I almost created the perfect suicide plan. Okay, I made sure that everyone just thought I was just miserable, whatever, to get used to it, just to condition their thinking. And I dropped my pen. Great. Anyways, <laughs> so when that happened, you see, when I dropped a pen like that, I would have been embarrassed and flustered. <laughs> With spirituality, you laugh at things like that. It's not yeah. the end of the world. But what I did was I yeah, I covered that facade, and then I have gained access illegally to the roof building. And this is 15 flights high. So I'm sure it was enough height if I jumped off the building, I was going to kill myself. But then this is how I will learn and realize, let's just be, he always existed, that he was real. He loved me so much. I never, I rarely released my tears in, pub, in public, but no one saw it anyway. So I was in the rooftop by myself. Mm -hmm. I started tearing. He says, you matter. Don't cure your, Don't kill yourself. That's when I start being more spiritual, start really, really, really getting to spirituality. Not because mom told me or the church told me, because I was indoctrinated and I didn't like it. I was like, I, I, leave me alone. God sounds boring. God sounds like he belongs in BC. <laughs> and that's a big problem with the churches today. They preach to him as if he's BC. Mm -hmm. He is the most current entity. He's timeless. And we need to start putting him in more current situations like politics. Yes, we should mix God and politics. You know, um, if you don't want to listen to it, that's fine. You could just please get out the room. Okay. Do we need to convince every single person? No, you don't. You don't. Because even the Bible and even the Torah and well, I'm not sure about Torah, but the Quran it tells you how you deal with them. You mm -hmm. move on. You don't force God into other people. And God was forced into me. That's why I was initially turned off by it. Mm -hmm. So that's my big lesson. When I talk to people about God, I tell them he's a loving, loving person. And it's really up to you. I always emphasize freedom of you know, free will, freedom of choice, whatever you want to frame it. Just to... Get who he is because the church talks to him like he's some church promo, like he's a militant, very strict father, and some even promo like, like he's a super softy pushover. No, he's just very compassionate, he's very forgiving, and then and he reacts based on how you react with others. If you're ashamed, he's ashamed. If you're not forgiven, well. He's just gonna look at you like, what the heck are you doing? I teach you how to forgive. What's 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 up here? What's right. going on? You know, and so spirituality needs to be taught again, and it needs to be re-emphasized to be introduced even to the 
mainstream media, social media, all the medias, the same medias I blame for sowing chaos. It's like it be sold for chaos. We could spread some order, some good, and some positivity. And we need it because the way these medias, they incentivize, you know, just to get ratings, the most eyeballs, most attention possible. Truth, forget about it. Mm-hmm. They could care less about the truth. No, they want the profits. They want this. Okay, they want all as much eyeballs as possible. That's, you know, if anyone who recognizes this, good for you. If you're brainwashed by them, well, I have hope you will outgrow it someday. Let's just say that. And that's me with spirituality. Without it, I would have said, ah, eh, that person could just rot in hell. Who cares? You see, so spirituality overall has shaped me how to be more helpful, more patient, and definitely be stable. Be stable because there's a lot of instability. You know, depression. Um, what else? A lot of behavioral disorders have skyrocketed or been diagnosed because we're just very unstable. We just look at the outside. We don't. We don't do enough introspection. We do not do that. And I encourage you, I'm not going to plead or beg because it's just your life here, but I want you to do better because I was a mess. Okay, I get it. Life is difficult. Life is difficult right now, but it's how you handle it. That's what's going to make you overcome adversity. Mm -hmm. And this is not no left wing cheesy talking point. This is reality. Okay. And I love how the left has over, overcome adversity, only applies to a certain group of people. It does, but applies to all of humanity. That's where they get wrong. You know, even the what's the what's the demographic they attack more? The white, straight, Christian male. Even them too. They got their own set of adversity that they have to overcome. Mm-hmm. So that I hope that answers your question. I think it was a little long-winded, but I think it was the most succinct way I could put it. Spirituality makes me a better person, period. And without it, you're just like you're right, you're riding a bike without wheels. Right. You're struggling and moving for nothing. Right. Now, when it came to, you know, I want to take a couple of steps back. You talked about there was one point where you felt so depressed and hopeless that you thought about committing suicide. Now, in, in, our, in our world today, m- most conditions, people with conditions, there are, it's a, it, they have a pretty high rate of suicide. And even with transgender organization or the gay generation, you know, tra- um, community, they have high um, rates of, of suicide. And I think transgender has the highest rate of suicide and, you know, people need help. People need to, to go to the root cause of what's causing their depression and learn how coping skills on how to overcome, learn to gain a purpose, learn to realize that they are somebody, that they are loved, that they can do it, they can overcome their crisis, that they can overcome any obstacle in their life, that they can make their dreams a reality. For you, how did you overcome the thoughts of suicide? How did you get to the point where you developed purpose in your life and you were over, we were able to overcome not wanting to end your life because there are so many people out there and every year there's so the rates of suicide is so high you know maybe you can give people some advice some ideas of different things they could do to implement in their life to move forward in life to a positive way of living a healthy way of living well i want to clear miss one misconception because Sally in politics, I put a little political flair. God is a conservative, which is nonsense. Let's get rid of that out the way. God loves all. Whether you're gay, lesbian, transgender, he loves you. He made you. You're not a mistake. You Mm -hmm. matter. That's what needs to be put. Does he like all the things we do? Of course not. But he loves us as human beings. 
You know, he's not the one that just makes things by accident. Oh, Stacy was a mistake. Elias is a mistake. I had a bad day when I made them. Who cares? Mm-hmm. All right. No, they matter. And I was just, and I will go back to a few things I've said. Introspect, find people, because people shape a lot of people. And this is something I had to learn how to accept. Mm-hmm. If you're with a bunch of negative people, I think it's time to change your circle. Even if you know them for five, 10 years, mm-hmm. it's time to change that circle and do it slowly but surely. That's a mistake I made. I did it too quickly to the point that I was nearly a loner. Yeah. I don't recommend you doing that quickly. Mm-hmm. Change that group slowly and surely. Go with the pace. Don't burn yourself out. And the other thing is find purpose. Find what you're good at. What makes you happy? Not just happy, but how can you help others? Yes. How can you help others? Because there's so many ways. And look, my depression came from a loss of my father, feeling a sense of worthlessness, worthlessness, excuse me, lack of purpose, find your purpose, go on a self-discovery journey. That's one way I've seen it. Me, I could, I I say that I continue to go on my self-discovery journey. Mm -hmm. It's a lifelong process. I'll just say, oh, I got everything figured out. You're a fool. (laughs) <laughs> okay. it's a lifelong journey continue to discover yourself talk to yourself in the mirror i'm gonna give you kooky advice i don't care if you think it's crazy try it talk to yourself compliment yourself you know this could sound cheesy but it works for me talk to yourself in the mirror say i'm gonna have a great day i am great i'm gonna help mm-hmm. people i'm you know beautiful handsome whatever adjective works for you yes you know, I think you need to do that and meditate. Oh, we need meditation. Everything is just so fast. It goes 300 miles per hour. Information, news, especially news. Forget it. And especially that TikTok and all that, all them 30 second video. I call it the ADHD factory. I'm sorry I offended you there, but I, I don't think TikTok's a good tool personally, but that is up for a good debate. Mm-hmm. It can be used for good. I'm not saying it can't, but the way it's being used right now, uh, a big source of misinformation. And I'm not going to get into that because I just want you to get better. And then we could deal with misinformation later and what misinformation really means and not just use it as a ploy to censor the other side because that's what it's been used as. Yes. So, look, you are wonderful. If no one has ever taught you that, it's your first time hearing it. Um, Happy in the sense I get to help you. You need to hear more of it because I shouldn't be the first person to tell you this. You matter. You was made for a reason. You're not a mistake. Even if you're, and I'm going to go real insane here, <laughs> your mom, dad, siblings, your so-called friends, in air quotes, mm-hmm. said otherwise. They got a human pink sponge just like you. They picking up just certain things just like you. They got their blind spots. You don't see who's valuable? Well, again, start changing that circle. Change that circle. Change yourself. And you're going to see life will change. Because it right. all starts from within. You can't change outside. Right. Outside is more the effect. You're the independent variable. You change that. You know, change your life and keep, you know, it's kind of like exercise. I know it gets uncomfortable. It can be difficult. Your brain's going to challenge you. Let's keep doing it. So it's like forming a new habit. It's difficult in the beginning, but it'll get easier and easier and easier and easier. Mm-hmm. So that's my advice to all of you. You matter. You are loved. It is just you need to realize it. It's the realization, the awareness gap that you're having. Right. Okay, and go talk to like minded people and not, you know, in terms of political opinions, because I'll be a hypocrite. In terms of like minded people who was either going through a similar, similar problem or even better, those who have an insight what it is and can help you give you tips how to overcome it and make solutions work for you. Mold it a little bit. Some people walk to a park is perfect. Some people ride in a bike. Mm-hmm. Meditate. Find a solution that works for you because solutions are not universal. 
Right. Sometimes they're unique and they're different. Find what, you know, find out your own vibe. This is why this is a self-discovery. You'll be surprised what you'll learn. I agree. I agree. And I think that that's a very important factor is that people have to go on a self-discovery and figure out who they are, what their needs are, what makes them happy. And the one important thing you said was that your life matters and you matter. And a lot of people, they suffer from low self-esteem. They don't love themselves. They haven't, you know, they go and that brings on the low self-esteem. And people have to realize that we all have something special about us. We all have greatness within us. We all have the power to make change. We all have the power to do good. And that's something that we all have to really think and think it thoroughly. And, you know, to me, the, 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 the definition of good is, is doing something to help not only yourself, but to help others and to make sure that the decision you're making that you think is going to help others, as long as it doesn't hurt anybody and it helps people, then it, then it's good. But if you're making a decision and you think it's going to help a few people, but in the long run, it's going to hurt some people, then you need to rethink your decisions. But it's very important to, to you know, when it comes to life, to really try to focus on being the best you possibly be. And people, you know, a lot of times people don't realize they have the ability to be whoever they dreamt of being, you know, when they were younger. We have the capabilities of being the people we want to become. We have the capabilities of reaching and elevating to any goal. If you really want something, you can do it. And we shouldn't let others influence our, our dreams and our goals. We should do what our heart says and what we want to do and take moments out during the day to really think about what, who am I? What do I want from this world? What do I want from my life? What's going to make me happy? What doesn't make me happy? What's stopping me from moving forward in life? And not let others around us influence us because a lot of people are influenced by the people around them. And it's not about the people around us. It's about you. You matter. What matters to you? And don't worry what other people think matters. That's them, their own opinion. It's about you and really loving yourself as an individual. And, you know, the one thing that bothers me is I, how I see this country being divided. We need to be a, a unit again. We need to be we need to be at peace with one another. The hatred has to go. I have never seen so much hate in this country like I have in the last couple of years. It's been again, it gets worse and worse and worse. We're here to, to, to be a unit to help each other. And it's not just when crisis comes that people come out of the, network, the, the woodwork. It should be all the time. We need to love one another and accept each other for who they are. And my views may not agree with all of your views, but I'm entitled to have my views and you're entitled to have yours. And a fight should not break out because my views are different than your views. Everybody is entitled to their own views, but they shouldn't afflict their own opinions and their own way of doing things and their own way of living life on other individuals. What's good for me may not be good for you. And we all have to remember that. And I think that's something that we're all lacking is that people will have their own beliefs and they're trying to push their beliefs on other individuals. We are all different. We come from different walks of life. We come from different paths. We come from different environments, different cultures. We all have a different way of thinking. But if something works for you and it's good and it's helping you be a better person, then by all means, keep doing it. But don't expect the person next to you to do the same thing that you're doing because what their life it consists of is probably not what your life consists of. And everybody needs to do what's best for them, not try to inflict their, their views and their opinions and their thoughts and their way of living on other individuals. It just doesn't work and it should not work. Um, exactly. And I just want to reemphasize, because you said something very important. Don't be selfish about your journey help others you're here to serve others we are social beings and i made this mistake too personally i'm not saying it's just a being a high horse preach down me i've been there's times i've been very selfish you end up being miserable and i think that too much being too self-absorbed has even made people more isolated increased loneliness depression 
we have to be with people. That's how we survived as a species. Yes, definitely. And I also like the point that you made is that look who is your circle that, you know, people say that over and over again. And I had, I know from my own experience in life, the people around you are the people that are going to have influence on you and you will become like the environment you surround yourself. So if you're around negative people, those negative energies are going to affect you in a negative way. If you are around high achievers and you are around people with positive outlooks on life, you will become a high achiever. You will have the motivation to want to do well and motivate yourself to elevate to new levels of life that you didn't even know that you could do because of the people around you, because of the knowledge they share, the positive energy they share, the views of life they share. We learn from each other. We feed from each other. And it's also very important, like you said, it's good not to wean them all out of your life at once, but to slowly wean them out of your life and find people that are really going to benefit you. And that doesn't mean that you can't ever talk to them, but you can have your distance and have, you know, generic conversation and be nice to one another, but they might not be the people you want to keep it closely to you, you know, in your circle. Uh, that's exactly right. And I was just going to clarify that, but you said it for me. And I say, okay, re okay, goodbye, negative. Treat them like cooties. Just clean them <laughs> out and throw them in the trash. No, 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 that's not, not that at all. But you already said it perfectly for me. Yeah. And, you know, these are things I have to learn personally. I have to learn. And these are not unique. I'm sure you heard it from other people. So I'm not going to take credit. Say, oh, I came up with this. So don't, don't make that claim. I would debunk you in a second. <laughs> yeah, you know, I could quote, you know, people who, you know, and same thing with social media. Go check on people who is being productive or doing good. Don't go to what's, well, you know, I'm not going to even say names. Just, just don't go to someone who is just promoting sensationalism and drama because, believe it or not, and this is another thing I think needs to be pointed out, we absorb it subconsciously. Yes. Rather, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, no, I, I know that. I know that's just a scary movie. Your subconscious don't know better. It's yeah. taking truth and fantasy and absorb them as if it's pure fact. It's absorbing all of that. So just be careful what you consume as well. And it, and I realized that in the pandemic, I was watching too much of this. And call me whatever. I was watching too much of the old Big Brothers. They were fun, entertaining. But then I started acting a little paranoid. Mm -hmm. I was taking care of my mother during the pandemic. I said, if she's going to try to screw me over, then, then, then I had to think to myself, whoa, 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 what am I doing? I'm yeah. watching too much of that TV. I started I started to realize it, but it's something you have to be keenly aware of. A lot of people's not aware of that. I love scary movies. Mm -hmm. all the time. Just don't be surprised. It's going to eventually... Um, shape you especially if you're going through a, a problem i you know i look to each his own at the end of the day uh, just don't be surprised you start absorbing traits th that that you see in in the screen you th if you think i'm crazy that's your provocative mm -hmm. but you're being impact and all i could say is i pity you for not realizing that well, there's a lot of scientific um, evidence that shows. Now, we only use 10% of our brain, but our subconscious in the back of our head, that part of your brain absorbs everything and it holds everything all the way from the time you came out of your womb to even before. And it holds all that information and anything that you are exposed to. That's why even when you're sleeping, like I remember when my son was sleeping one day, he used to love to watch all those battle shows and they're fighting on TV, but he's dead asleep. And I walk in there and he's punching a make-believe person. And I look on the screen and there are two guys going at it. And, you know, he is in a deep sleep, but his subconscious is absorbing the information on TV. And so he, it is going through his brain, even though he is asleep. And the same goes in life, that what we listen to, what we hear past, you know, past uh, anything that's happened in the past, any trauma, all these things are stored in our subconscious. And no matter if you're thinking about it or not, it's still there. 
and it will come back. You know, they're in your dreams or if something triggers you, it's all in your subconscious. And sometimes people wonder why they get triggered so easy or they get angered so easy because it's in your subconscious and your, your repressed emotions have not overcome these things. So if you have not healed and it's in your subconscious, it will trigger you. And the same thing when you're watching TV, all those things, they stir up into your brain and it does trigger. It does, it makes you like you'll wake up in the morning and you might feel a certain way. It's because your brain was thinking about that show the night before, even though you don't remember it. Oh, that's exactly right. And let's put a political spin to it while we are going crazy. <laughs> Either you support Trump, Kamala, or nobody, it doesn't matter. You're getting the news one way or another, unless you're Amish or a cave person, <laughs> that I doubt you're being exposed to this. I'll I'll say this here. You absorb all of that. So, oh, I'm disgusted with Trump said, oh, I can't stand Kamala, but you're still holding that in. And that's why when you when you hear that name, and trust me, this has been going on for years. Just say you just some of you realize it, and sadly, some of you haven't. That you start getting triggered. Oh, Kamala, oh, she's the enemy. Oh, I don't, I don't want, I don't want this woman as president. She's gonna take my guns away. Oh, Trump, oh, I can't stand him. I can't stand him. He's such a sexist, misogynist, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, to put a political spin to it, you know, the news is not gonna help you. Just get the weather. And <laughs> I just, I'm gonna shamelessly plug in the new paper. Something yeah. quick. I'm sure whenever this episode is out, there's gonna be a link. Click on that. Get your quick news with no to little sense i don't think there's any sensationalism i've read like 50 articles from them i haven't detected sensationalism some of you might criticize say it's boring yeah no but it's straight to the point you get what you need your stocks your business the culture politics yes politics i think you need to be informed i didn't say get rid of politics okay and also be thankful there's a check and balance system either i think we forget that I said, oh, my goodness, Trump's going to be president. going to go out of the country or Kamala. Oh, I got to get out. I got to get out. Thank goodness for a checks and balance system. If another party takes over the Senate, doesn't matter if that president wins or not. There's not much they could do except through executive orders. And all it's going to take is a president for the opposite party just to repeal that. And then there's the House. Okay? If, if different parties are controlling different parts of government, well, you better learn how to compromise because... If you're throwing a far left or far right policy, it's going to be tossed away or you're just going to ignore it completely. Yes. So thank goodness for checks and balances. The president is not the king, the queen, or the dictator, or the almighty emperor. Th and thank God for that. <laughs> Do you just imagine mm. if either one of them was had that kind of power? Who? Oh. I think that the, I think we would have been wiped out already just within within ourselves and and all I'm gonna say is the the foreign enemies they are waiting for that to happen. You don't want to make the enemy win. Yeah. Okay. You know you know these countries are because I think the way we're gonna decline is we fight among ourselves. Yeah. And we need to stop that. All right, we just need to stop that. Just vote. And for the voters, vote. Vote based on the issue that's most important to you. If you want better reproductive rights, you know which party to go to. You want um, a party that's better for churches, you know which party is that. Mm -hmm. Whatever is most important to you. More welfare benefits, you know which party is going to support you there. Mm -hmm. Just go by the issues. Put that person in and check their track record. Just because mm -hmm. they say it. It doesn't mean they're going to do it. Right. Their track record. And if they're new, just dig something up or talk to someone who's informed if, you, if you're if you too lazy or can't do the research. Right. Talk to someone who's informed that you trust. Mm -hmm. Go to a source you trust. Not someone you like <laughs> because you don't want, I don't want echo chambers. You know, I don't want the, what's the example? All the Kamala's, you know, do they all pay attention to MSNBC while all the pro Trumper people's going to forget Fox, Newsmax? Okay, I'll put another one out there, which is growing rapidly, by the way. Newsmax, not Fox. They're more right wing than Fox. 
Fox seems like a moderate centrist network compared to Newsmax. Um, uh, but I think that's that's a problem. That's a problem because they all go to their little safe zones and just hear what they want to hear. Oh, yes, Trump, great. Trump is great. Trump is awesome. He can never do us wrong. And the other one, oh, Kamala, she's going to do so well. She's a revolution. She's a revolutionary. She's going to disrupt. She's going to break barriers for women. Look, just, just if I'm going to say this and focus more on the state and local elections because they impact you more than the president. Mm -hmm. uh, so much federal policies, maybe like one of every 1,000 really affects you. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, something like the income tax and things like that. But focus on state and local policy because if you don't focus on that, you wonder why bad laws are being passed because people don't participate on those enough. Mm -hmm. and they'll be forced to moderate. Sadly, a state like New York is too Democrat. Uh, a state like West Virginia, which I've visited, too Republican. Mm -hmm. Balance. All I'm asking for is balance. Balance, balance, balance. If even if... I'm not even sure for all states as possible, like West Virginia. I think that state is very, very Republican. When I look at the breakdown of their government, I think it's like 80, like 80 percent Republican, it's like 20 percent Democrat. New York City is like 90 percent Democrat, and only about 10 percent Republican. I said, no, that 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 imbalance is no good. And even if that other party is gone, and just break it down further, they. The Democrats can fight among each other. The moderates and progressives are going to fight among each other because they see some things differently. Like policing, moderates is pro-police almost as much as Republicans. And while the progressives are like, no, no, we need to change that. We need to we need to hold them accountable. And then on the right, what, what, what will they argue about? Okay, it's still abortion. The moderates are like, oh, no, I think we need to allow some abortion you know, for certain exceptions. While the others are like, no, 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 no abortion at all. Mm-hmm. So, even if you get rid of the party, you, there's gonna be fight within the party. Yeah, because there's different camps, and no, this definitely. is just an oversimplified example. I don't want to get too deep about the camps and, and their divisions within the party, but you you get you get the gist of it. Mm -hmm. Even if you get even if you demolish the other party, there's gonna be fights among each other because that's what politicians like to do: fight, look good. You know, they're like sadly another class of celebrities to some extent. Mm -hmm. you know, so, oh my goodness, this one's so awesome. Oh, I hate that one. You know, it's it's yeah. We we need to get our act together and just just vote. Yeah. If you just you know vote, if you vote early, congratulations. You are a progressive voter in the sense that you vote before. Before the election day, which I've been a proponent on since I first heard the idea. So, oh, yes, working people, good. They got a chance to cast their ballot, especially those who work in retail jobs mm -hmm. and other jobs like home health aid, you know, the low paying jobs. They don't, they, I don't know, have that kind of time. Well, the more I'm not even sure I call it even middle income because that's falling apart. And high income people, they, they have time to vote and the elders have time to vote. Yeah, good. More accessibility for democracy. Mm -hmm. I'm happy that finally Republicans are on board with that. Democrats are always on board with that. I agree with them generally on that one. I say, yeah, more ex the more access more accessibility is better. That's stronger democracy. I think this year they're gonna actually the, we're gonna have the most voters I think that we've ever had. Even in New Jersey, when I did the early vote in, there was a two hour line. And even the gentleman who worked there, he has been doing it for decades. And he said that he has never seen so many people come out to vote like he has with this election. And to me, regardless of the outcome, it's a win. Mm -hmm. It's a win. It's a good thing. It's a very, very good thing. I want to see what New York, I know, I think New York is doing um, pretty well on that. I got to check the results. I don't want to speak too much about it because to be honest, I haven't studied all much on it, but the swing states, oh, they pull in numbers and, and some of them Republicans are performing well and some of them Democrats are performing well. So this could be a very, very competitive election. Yeah. Yeah, for great. sure. 
Now, if you yeah. had to take today's conversation and you wanted to really focus on some important factors that we discussed today, what are some of the things you'd like to leave the listeners with? The very first important thing before I would get to the political pointers, you matter, you make the difference. If you were to kill yourself, you won't be able to make an impact on earth. So don't do that. Don't sell yourself short. Discover who you are. The self journey, the self journey that you decide to embark on is going to unlock so much things about yourself that you're going to be shocked. You might have to confront some of your demons. It's not going to be all roses and daisies and beautiful rainbows. Some of it, you have to fight your own demons. But it's worth it. It's worth it because you're going to end up being the winner at the end. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's my big thing to you. Go on a self-discovery journey. Check what's going on in your life. If there's things you don't like, analyze. Work on that and change it. I recommend slow, not quick and rapid like I did. Because it was time I was, I was actually a bit alone for a while. Change it little by little. Don't reject them. If they reject you, then that's different. You let them go. So that's that's what I'm going to leave with. And that's spiritual aspect. We got to do more spiritual declutter. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's what we need to do. And pay attention to what you're consuming. And that's and then for the political side, get informed. Vote. Don't be part of the tribes. Right? Stick to your political beliefs. Stick to that. I want to be Make sure you, you understand. Stick to your political beliefs. But just don't get into the tribalistic um, nonsense because you'll, you'll be part of the problem, mm -hmm. not part of the solution. I don't care if you're Democrat, Republican, or Independent. And this is coming from an Independent. You could stick to your political beliefs. You don't have to change them. Just to, don't do people-pleasing. You, you got your reasons why you believe in X, Y, and Z. And that person got their beliefs why they believe in A, B, C. Okay? So I'll have a conversation and start off with a best foot forward. Don't sound accusatory. They use words that are not accusatory. I say, so they say, oh, I think that's a lie. So, hmm, it's not such a thing. I didn't hear that before. Something like that. I've been listening to Jefferson. He's a very good um, lawyer. You listen to lawyers. They'll teach you how to debate better, communicate better, and check your flaws of communication that he wasn't aware of. That's a little different. But I'm trying, my job, my job is to try to lower the tribalistic heat that's already too darn high. I would like to be colorful in my language, but I'm assuming this is a very, very professional audience. It's too high. We got to cool down the temperature, cool it down. Mm -hmm. You're going you're gonna to get your policies through one way or another. Be creative, be resourceful. Stop thinking everything is doom and gloom. Mm -hmm. okay, and focus on state and local politics because that impacts you even more than the federal. Okay, that's why you got to vote in every single race. If you just vote for president, you for you, you just discounted your power. Talk to someone that you know. Talk to someone that you trust that can help you guide you through these races, and that can give you just bullet points of who these candidates are. Because I know a lot of the noise is garbage, just like you know. Trump calling Kamala a name and Kamala doing the same. Know their policies and know their positions. That's what we need to know. Yes. Mm -hmm. And how they can help you in your particular issues. Who, which candidate is better for your issues? That's the general framework. Mm-hmm. 100%. Now, tell everybody about your podcast and where they can find your podcast. Well, my podcast is Politically High Tech. And the logo is purple for a reason, because I allowed any political colors, red and blue mixed together, it's purple. Mm -hmm. So that color is intentional. My favorite color is red. I'm a right winger. No, don't say that now. It's purple for a reason. It has the United Nations. I mean, we try to include everybody as much as you can. It's a silhouette of it, because I'm sure if I do the real UN copyright, I'll be in trouble. So <laughs> copyright is you just got a nice silhouette of it. But you could tell it's United Nations, a very bare bone United Nations. <laughs> okay, so this, so that is just to include 
global inclusion, even though I focus primarily on Americans, but you foreigners want to hear about the crazy, somewhat entertaining American politics, come join here. I try to make it fun sometimes, mm -hmm. and sometimes I make it serious. Like, But overall, I hope you get some value out of it, because I think you need to be informed, regardless of it's politics, history, current events. That's part. That's that's first type episode. Second type, technology mostly focused on AI. What are the pros and cons, and why you sh why I think you should use it? Why I think it's a good tool overall. I'm a cautious optimist. That's mm -hmm. a camp that I'm in, and why you should maintain human intelligence, critical thinking when you're using AI, okay, and communicate it properly. Because if you don't use AI, your job's gonna die. <laughs> okay, I'm paraphrasing someone here, <laughs> and therefore. Development again. Um, ask anything to empower you. It could be spiritually, financially, legally, even physically. I have a lot of stuff covered there. It, it's wide variety of positivity, except for my old stuff. My old stuff was just me experimenting within the past. I didn't know what to do, but now it's development, and I'm happy I made that change. Mm -hmm. Something that's good for you that can empower you in some way. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because we need to get better. And I believe we need to get better. And I need to get better myself just because I'm a I'm a whole story guest. Doesn't mean I'm better than you. I'm just going through this crazy journey called life with you. <laughs> I love it. And now where can people find you? Like where can they go if they want to maybe go to your social network or if you have a website? Oh, sure. I can't believe I forgot about that. <laughs> well, I have multiple social media sites, and you did ask about where they could find it. It's an Apple um, podcast. And that, that's where they could primarily find me. Uh, in terms of my social medias, I do have a YouTube channel. I have a Twitter. I refuse to call it X. Yes, I am that petty. I, I have a Facebook account as well. And recently, I set up a LinkedIn. Okay. So you can find me. You can find me on all those social media. Oh, and Rumble. I can't find Rumble. I call it the weird cousin of the the weird cousin of YouTube. So <laughs> I'm also there as well. It looks like a TikTok symbol if you check the Podmatch profile. Um, but it, it's really Rumble. I just play a little trick with you. If you fell for it, uh, <laughs> hello. That's me being a little jokester, a little prankster. Mm hmm. So, but regardless, I really hope um you you check it out. That's all I can say. Hope you get something out of it. Definitely, and and you have that white paper that you will put the link on with all the information, with a lot of good data and information about some of the things that we were talking about today. Correct. Well, I don't have data data for a lot of that, but I could share you some sites that. I could um I could easily find what's going on with the early votes, especially in the swing states, about which state is performer, what, and yeah, and then whatever else, whatever whatever else you need, I will be happy to provide that. So definitely, like the, the new paper is short, straight to the point. Mm -hmm. uh, let me go. Let me go check right now. What's the early vote? The early vote data because there's a lot of it going out and check news nation as well that's where i get a lot of my sources from that's a very centrist leaning network i don't favor either side of, of the aisle um that's the, that's that's the that's the best way that i could do that oh look at that interview turn by each state let me see is that it okay so i found one right here this is from kcra.com. And let me click what early what um early votes they want to say. Oh, North Carolina, almost four million early wow. votes has been casted. Wow. North Carolina. We had 3.86 to be exact. Let's see New Jersey. Oh, over a million. That's 14% of the voting age population. North Carolina. Yeah, 45, almost half already. Oof. Wow. Yeah. New York. Impressive. Yeah, New York is nearly 1.7 million. That's about 10% of the voting age population. I had to do that because that's my home state. Michigan. Michigan is almost 2.4 million. And that's 30% of the voting age, which that's impressive. 
Yeah. Yeah. I would say anything over 30% is very precious. Let me go give you this data right now based on while I'm reading this to you. Um, okay. There you go. That's some of that right there. That's some of the, that's, yeah, that's, this is actually an impressive stuff. Let me see what's another one. Nevada, almost 40%. Oh, okay, over 900,000. Yeah, it's not a big state. But the fact that nearly 38% of uh, its voting age population already voted early is good. Yeah, very good. This has been amazing. This has been amazing. You know, I, I'm going to put that link on so other people can, you know, follow also. But this has been a, a really great conversation. I really enjoyed this. I, I think you're wonderful. I think your views are wonderful. And I, I really appreciate you coming out and, and speaking on, on several of these topics because I feel like they're very important topics that we need to touch base on. So I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. You've done an amazing job with your with all with everything that you provided today and your information is is very valuable. And I, I want to just say thank you for coming out today. Yeah. Uh, one more thing I want to say is there may be even additional links. Um, the only thing I need to find is just I want to find a breakdown between Democrat and Republican just for the or independence. Mm -hmm. See if there's a breakdown. But in terms of these, just just a surface level, this is good turnout. This is a win for democracy. Um, you know, even the states does not swing, just vote, vote. Because I noticed that strong blue and red are not voting as much as the swing states yeah. that are voting. So that's um, we got to improve in that. We, that's the thing, even though it's good, but there's some room for improvement for sure definitely well thank you so much i i really appreciate this no i i appreciate it thank you for inviting me again oh you're very welcome you have a great day you too <laughs>